Welcome to our fifth episode. We'll be finishing up the chassis assembly, the final body install, exterior mods including an external wrap, the first start, test and tune, and taking it out to go off-roading. Enjoy the episode, let's get to it. The next step was the Generite gas tank and protective skid plate installation as well as the related gas lines. As mentioned in a previous video, the factory gas tank can't be used when doing a V8 swap, plus it has less capacity than the new tank. By moving the tank to the back, you kill three birds with one stone. More gallons, better tank protection, and easy exhaust routing up the passenger side of the chassis. After doing research, we determined the stock Jeep transfer case is up to snuff even with a V8 swap with exception to the driveline connectors. To be sure we had no leaks or problems, we tore it apart, inspected every piece, and put it back together with new seals and the conversion 1350 driveline yokes. The custom exhaust system was fabbed in stainless for longevity, includes up and downstream O2s, high flow aftermarket cats, and is emissions legal in all 50 states. We went with two and a half inch tube to the cats and muffler, and three inch from the muffler out the rear, all tucked up nice and tight to minimize snags and damage. Before installing the body, we installed the engine harness. It was much easier without the fenders and core support in the way. The drive shafts are built from extra heavy wall DOM tube and each feature a long travel slip joint at one end and a double carden joint at the other end. The tranny cooler is a high efficient radial internal and external fin design and the lines are custom fabricated out of stainless tubing. And finally, we have a roller. It's been a long journey getting to this important milestone and we're glad to finally be at this stage. Now on to installing the body for the last time along with the goodies related to it. To keep the body secure we installed a new polyurethane body mounting kit. The fenders are fab from heavy gauge aluminum and are the wider version front and back. The rock sliders are laser cut and formed out of 3 16 thick steel giving reliable performance and a striking visual. Being able to hold first gear or manually shift the trans is important, especially for crawling and the 2011s didn't come with that option. Fortunately, our V8 swap wire harness did, so we purchased and installed a new later model tap shifter to give us that ability. So guess what today is? No, it's not demo day. Today is start the motor for the first time. Super excited. We charge the fuel pump a couple times. The first start is always interesting. Did we forget anything? Are all the wiring and connections correct and tight? 
Will the motor and trans have any problems? Okay, here we go. Cross your fingers. Well, it started with the bass tune no problem, and we were off to the first drive to test the brakes. After a couple short drives, it was on to tuning with EFI Live. First the engine, then the tranny shift points. It was a back and forth process, but after several rounds, we got it dialed in. We upgraded the headlights and fog lights to the newer look that incorporates LED style halos, which also serve as daytime running lights. Nice and bright and a modern touch. In selecting the winch, we went with our favorite brand, Warren. We chose the Xeon 12S Platinum model with their remote controller and their Spidura Pro Synthetic Rope. This impressive piece of hardware is as powerful as it looks. To control the ARB lockers, lights, and accessories, we chose a couple of switch panels that included a voltmeter, a bunch of backlit switches, and a couple USB ports to charge phones and other gadgets. Along the lines of exterior upgrades, we installed the Mopar 10th Anniversary Rubicon Hood with functional vents. It serves two purposes. One, gives a more modern look, and two, allows heat out of the engine compartment. There are lots of exterior design options available for custom-built Jeeps. However, for us, there was only one choice. We decided to have it wrapped in a Shades of Black camo theme. Two benefits we loved. The practical advantage, if a panel gets scratched or damaged, no special paintwork is needed on the new panel, just rewrap it. On the design side, it looks awesome and we really like it. That's it for this episode. See you in Moab.